Okay, let's open up with the book of First Corinthians 15, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Let's start. First book of Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I prepare, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Read that again, verse 1. First book of Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received the you stand. So now the Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Corinth, okay? So he's reminding them of the gospel which he preached unto them, okay? Watch this. Give me Ephesians 1 verse 13. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. He's reminding them of the gospel which he has preached unto them. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In whom he also trusted. After that he heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. The what? In whom the gospel of your salvation. So the word of truth is the gospel of our deliverance. The gospel of our salvation. The word of truth. That's the, that's the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the word of truth. Which is what? The gospel of our deliverance. Read that again, verse 13. Start at the 12, actually. Start at the 12. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Who first trusted in Christ. Who first trusted in Christ. Come on. In whom he also trusted. In whom? The After whom that. Is, hold on. The whom is Christ in verse 12. In whom he also trusted. That's talking about Jesus the Christ, come on. In whom he also trusted. After that, he heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. The gospel of in your whom deliverance. Also, the gospel of your deliverance. The word of truth is the gospel of our deliverance. Come on. In, in whom he also trusted. Mm -hmm. After that, he heard the word of truth. Read. The gospel of your salvation. Mm -hmm. In whom also, after that, he believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You see that thing? So the, what, what is going to cause everybody, all 12, men and women, what's going to cause us to be sealed, you understand, is the laws of God. The sealing is God's commandment. The ceiling is the laws of God. It's not a microchip. Okay? The ceiling is God's law. Read that verse again. Read it slow. Read the whole thing. First book of the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 12. Mm -hmm. that, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusted. Come on. After that, you heard the word of truth. The law. Come on. The the gospel of your salvation. Read on. In whom also, after that, ye believed. Read. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So the word of truth, which is the gospel of our deliverance, is that also after that ye believed, meaning ye applied. You had the word of truth, which is the gospel of your deliverance. You applied. You believed it. Okay. You were filled with that Holy Spirit of promise. So what you want, what you want, what you want, what I need you brothers and sisters to understand is that you need to apply so that you can be filled with that Holy Spirit of promise. If you don't apply, how are you gonna be filled? How are you gonna be delivered? How are you gonna be how are you gonna be collected from wherever we at to be taken to the wilderness? How is that gonna happen if you don't apply? The key to salvation is application. Understand that. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Second book of Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22. Come on. For the Jews require a sign. No, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Come on. Second book of Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22. Mm hmm Who 
who had also sealed us. What did he do? And give who hath also sealed us. So Christ sealed us. The Lord sealed us by sending us by sending his son Jesus Christ to magnify the law and make it honorable. Come on. And given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. You see that thing? To, and given the earnest of the spirit in our heart. What is that spirit? That Holy Spirit of promise. That's how we're going to be sealed. But you have to believe. You have to apply what is written. When the gospel of salvation is taught to you, you have to apply. That's the key to salvation. That's the key for you to be sealed. Give me that book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16. Isaiah 8 verse 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verses 16. Bind up the testimony. Mm -hmm. Seal the law among my disciples. Read it again. Read it right. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the law among my disciples. So the feeling is the law, which is that Holy Spirit of promise, which you believe when it's taught unto you. Okay, go back where you were there. First Corinthians chapter 15. You know what? Hmm. Give me Hebrews 4 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. We're still dealing with the gospel of our deliverance. Hebrews 4 verse 1. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1. Come on. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it so the promise that was left us is the promise that was given to our forefather abraham you understand abraham isaac and jacob that is the problem that is that is the promise that is left us entering into his rest the rest is the kingdom the rest is, is the kingdom come on verse two for unto us was the gospel preached. For unto us was the what? Gospel preached. For unto us was the gospel preached. Read on. As well as unto them. Uh -huh. But the word preached did not profit them, not oh. being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You read verse 2 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So now it says, unto us was the gospel preached. Who's the us that is making reference to? It's talking about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's the us. You understand? It says, as well as unto them. That then is going into what? Northern kingdom. But that's the second level of understanding. What is going into here when it says, unto us, it's talking about the Jews in Jerusalem. Northern kingdom was there also. And so then it took about our forefathers in the wilderness with Moses. That was as, as well as unto them. But the way preached did not profit them. Why? Because our forefathers did not have faith. That's why there was 40 years in the wilderness. Because the Lord made, he saw that they have no faith. They are void of faith. You understand? That's why they did not see, they did not enter into his rest. They never made it to the promised land. That was the rest back then. You understand? All this, give me that in Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32 verse 20. The book of Deuteronomy. So 32 verses 20. Mm -hmm. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what the end shall be. For they are very fraught generation. For they are a very fraught generation. Children in whom is no faith. Children in whom is no faith. That's why it says they, they could not enter into his rest. Why? Because of what? Lack of faith. They didn't have faith. You understand? That's why, kept, that's why when Christ walked the scene, he said, Oh, faithless generation. You understand? Go back to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 now. The book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Come on. And for unto us was the gospel preached, mm -hmm. as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, 
not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see that thing, not, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it, meaning what? They did not have faith. That's why when the trials came in the wilderness, they what? They failed the test. Why? Because they did not have faith. They wanted something to be done now, but that was not the, that was not the objective. The objective was to test their faith. And they failed. That's why the first generation was all put to death, except for Joshua and Caleb. Jump up to the previous chapter, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16 now. The book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For some, when they had heard, did provoke how be it. The book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. You see that thing? It says, when they heard it, what did they hear? The gospel. Because Moses was teaching the gospel. That's one, people, that's one thing that many people don't understand. Moses was teaching the gospel in the wilderness. All this, give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 44. Deuteronomy 4, verse 44. Moses was teaching the gospel in the wilderness. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 44. Mm -hmm. And this is the law which Moses said before the children of Israel. You see that thing? The law which Moses said before the children of Israel. That's why it says, and to us was the gospel preached. The apostle Paul is giving you an account of what Moses taught in the wilderness. He taught us the gospel. Okay, go back to Hebrews 3, verse 17 again. Verse the book of Hebrews 3, 16. verse 7, 16. The book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Because that first generation, many of them didn't make it. They were put to death. Come on. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Stop right there. You see that thing? But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Who was Moses in the wilderness with? The 12 tribes of Israel, he was with our, he was with our forefathers and foremost. That's why it says, with whom was he grieved 40 years? The 12 tribes, come on. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? They died in the wilderness, come on. And to whom swear he that he should not enter into his rest? That they should not but what? To them that that they should not enter into his rest. So he says, and to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest? What was the rest? When we were in the wilderness, where did we go from the wilderness? Where did we go to from the wilderness? The promised land, that was the rest. Right now we're waiting for another day of rest, which is what? The kingdom of heaven that shall be established upon the earth when the Lord returns. Okay, verse 18 again. The book of Hebrews 3 verse 18. And to whom swore? He that should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. But to them that believe not, because they lack faith. Come on. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. That's it right there. They could not enter in because of unbelief. That's why I always mention, many of you don't believe the truth. You can fake the funds, you play very well, but you don't believe what is written. You understand? So you have to pray for that spirit. You have to pray and fast for the Lord to take the spirit from you, the spirit of unbelief, so you can walk according to as it is written. The reason why our forefathers in the wilderness and foremothers didn't make it into the rest, which is the promised land, was because of what? Faith. They had lacked faith. They did not have faith. You understand? Now, Hebrews 4, verse 1 and 2 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. It has therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Really? For unto us was the gospel preached, mm -hmm. as well as unto them. But the world preached, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see that thing? The only way the, word of the, the, the Bible is going to profit you is if you have faith of the promises that are coming. Because faith is what's going to keep you going. You, give, you, you keep the commandments, you have faith that the things that are written, they will shortly come to pass. That's what's going to help you to endure in this walk. Faith. You have to have faith. Yes, you must apply because you, you show your faith by your application. You apply. But you cannot be applying and you don't have the faith. 
Because you don't have the faith, you're just moving by emotion, you're going through the motion. Eventually, you're going to give up. You're going to give up the ghost. You understand? So the two goals will go hand in hand. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 9 verse 7. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. So now the way the way you're, you're gonna get delivered is that you're gonna be saved by the works, which is the commandment, and by faith. So it's not just keeping the commandments. Keep the commandments, yes, but you must have faith. The reason they are keeping the commandment is that what? You get your spirit right. Okay? But you must have faith. There must be faith behind it. Because you can apply. You can, because if you don't have the faith, you might apply for a while. But after a while, you stop doing it because why? You don't have the faith. Faith is what's going to keep you going. You understand? The faith of Christ is what's going to keep you going. The promises that are written in this book is what's going to keep you going. It's going to help you to endure. So as you apply, you must have faith, okay? You, whatever, whatever issues that you're going through, whatever problem that, whatever affliction, whatever trial, the only way you're going to survive the trial, yes, you must fear the Lord, but you must have faith. As you apply, faith must be at the forefront. You understand? The faith that you have in Christ, hence why you apply in the Lord. You understand? Um, go back to um, 1 Corinthians now, chapter 15, verse 1. First book of Corinthians. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. He says, he says, which also, meaning the same gospel which I preached unto you, you received it, and wherein you stand. Meaning you stand upon the gospel that I preached unto you. What is the gospel? The word of truth. The gospel of our deliverance. That's why the apostle Paul is saying what he's saying. Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 15. 2nd Ezra, 2nd Ezra chapter, 2nd Ezra chapter 16 verse 35. Second book of Ezra chapter 16 verses 35. Hear now these things and understand them. Ye servants of the Lord. Talking about you, the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. Behold, the word of the Lord receiveth. Do what? Be behold, the word of the Lord receiveth. It. it says, Behold, the word of the Lord receives, meaning believe, apply. It. That's what it's saying. Wait. Believe not the God of whom the Lord spake. He says, Believe not the God of the believe, not the God of whom the Lord spake. What are those gods, false gods, the idols of the other nations? He said, don't believe those gods. Because they are not gods, they are idols. That's what he's saying right there. Read that again, verse 36. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 36. Behold, the word of the Lord receiveth. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Okay, go back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you, the gospel which I which I prepared unto you, which, which preached, also which ye, I preached, which I preached unto you. Come on. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and really stand. Read. By which also ye are saved. By which also you are what? If, by which also ye are saved. So the gospel that Christ, that the apostle Paul taught unto us is by which we are going to be saved, by which we are going to be delivered. So what we're reading in 1 Corinthians is the same thing the Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, he's saying the same thing here. By which he are saved. Okay, come on. Uh, couldn't hear you, sir. Verse 2 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2. By which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. You see that thing? It says, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, 
What is the thing that is commanding us to keep in memory with that repeat unto us? It's written in verse 1. Read verse 1 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received an early stand. Now watch this. Now, we're going to go into that thing, okay? Read on, read verse 3 now. Come on. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received. Mm -hmm. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Read verse 3 again. First book of Corinthians 15 verse 3. For I delivered unto you the first of all, the first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So he's delivering unto us first of all that which he also received. Because what did the apostle Paul receive? He received the wisdom of the Lord to teach the gospel unto the 12 tribes, the scattered Israelites, the uncircumcision. You understand? Read verse 4. He says, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Give me that in Acts chapter 5 real quick. Acts 5 is 30. The book of Acts chapter 5 verse 13. Acts 5 is 30. 33. The book of Acts chapter 5 verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Come on. Him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Okay, give me Acts 2.38. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 38. Come on. Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see that thing? Or the, of the Holy Ghost. So what the Apostle Peter is saying here is that what we are reading in the book of Acts, because Luke wrote the book of Acts, okay? Acts chapter 5, is that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, why did he do it? So that what? We may, be, we may, we may receive remission of sins. We may be forgiven for our sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is the gift of the Holy Ghost? The promise. What is that promise? The kingdom of heaven on earth. Because for us today, the gift of the Holy Ghost is the kingdom. The gift of the Holy Ghost is the kingdom that will be established upon the earth. The promises that were made to our forefathers, Abraham, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You understand? That's what is going on. That's what the Apostle Peter is saying here. All right? Um, go back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 3. For I deliver unto you, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Read. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It says then that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Give me Matthew 12, verse 40. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. Start of verse 39. Matthew 12, verse 39. The book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Mm -hmm. And there shall be no sign, and there shall no sign be given to it. But the sign of the prophet Jonas. So now your son, you you are distracted, Solomon. Verse 39 again. The book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So now Christ is saying, No sign is going to be given to this evil and adulterous generation. But the only sign that will be given is the sign of the prophet John. Now, let's understand the sign of the prophet John, okay? We're going to read about it, but what we, are, we need to understand what Jonah did first and foremost. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Jonah, chapter 1. Um, give me Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17. Before you get that, actually. Hmm. Could you go back to Matthew 12? Matthew 12, verse 39 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 39. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, 
and even an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and they shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Next verse. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So now, this is the sign. Jonah will be three days and three nights in the world's belly. The soul will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay? Give me that in Jonah 1 verse 17. Jonah chapter 1 verse 17. The book of Jonah. Chapter 1 verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Really? And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. That's the sign. But another sign is in these last days, okay? Because that was Christ when he was giving that and was in the parable, was talking about the time of was giving Jonah the time. But today, what is the sign of the prophet Jonah? Give me that in Jonah chapter three now. Jonah three verse one. This is the sign of the prophet Jonah that the Lord will leave will live with us after he's gone. Okay? Jonah 3 verse 1. The book of Jonah 3 verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Read. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So now Jonah is being commanded to go and teach the gospel to the city of Nineveh. Because Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria, where Israel was scattered at. Come on. So Jonah yeah. arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. Really? And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So now he's prophesying that Nineveh is going to be overthrown. So when he says he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown, what is the crying he's making reference to? Go back to Jonah 3 verse 2 again. The book of Jonah 3 verse 2. Arise, go unto Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So the crying is the preaching. That's what we are doing. That's what Jonah did back then. That's what we are doing today. Give me that in Luke 14, 23. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verses 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go unto the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. You see that thing? This is the sign of the prophet Jonah in the last day. Jonah was Jonah preached back then. The sign today is what? We will go to the streets, we will go out to the streets and teach. That is the sign of the prophet John. That is the sign Christ says, I'm going to leave that sign with you in the last day to show you that of my second coming. My prophets will go out, they will prepare for that, they will pave the way for my second coming. That is, the, that is another sign. The sign that is the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul is making reference to what? When he, 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 he was buried. Okay, according to the scriptures. So that's what we are reading in Matthew 12, verse 40. Go back there. Matthew 12, verse 40 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 40. Mm -hmm. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 4. Read. And he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. So that's what we read in Matthew 12, verse 40. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 26, verse 1. Matthew 26, verse 1. Pay close attention. Okay, Matthew 26, verse 1, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 1, mm -hmm. and it came to pass. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Come on. You know that after two days in the feast, 
of the Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be sacrificed. Okay, read uh -huh. that two again. The two again. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 2. You know that after two days in the feast of the Passover, no, is, the Son of is. Man is betrayed. Hold on. It says, you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 2. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, mm -hmm. and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So now Christ is telling his disciples that in two days is going to be the feast of Passover, and I'm going to be what? I'm going to be crucified. You understand? Read on. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people and to the palace of the high priest who was called Cephas. Cephas. So Cephas is where they assembled too. But later on, we're going to find out that he started with Ananias first. Then they sent him to Cephas. Read on, verse 4. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. Come on. But they said, not on the feast day lest there be any uproar among the people. Lest there be an uproar among the people. So they're saying, listen, let's not do it on the feast day because there's going to be an uproar among the people. That's what they are saying among themselves. They are discussing this among themselves. Come on. Lest there be an uproar among the people. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the Leaper. Read. Okay, hold on. Jump down they, to verse 14. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Read, verse, read verse 5 again. The book of Matthew said 26, verse 5. But they said, now on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Jump down to verse 14. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests. So now this is the betrayer now. Remember it says he's going to be betrayed to be crucified. Read verse 2 again. Matthew 26, verse 2. The book of Matthew 26, verse 2. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Read verse 14 now. Then one of the twelve, two called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest. He went unto the chief priest. The chief priest that he read about is what? Verse 3. Jump back up to verse 3. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest was called Caiaphas. So they went to, they were at Caiaphas' palace. So they gathered themselves together how to kill Christ. Judas being one of the 12, he went to the chief priest, he went to Caiaphas' palace to discuss how they're going to betray Christ and have him crucified. Okay, read on. Matthew 26, verse 14 now, again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 14. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest really? and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. Come on. And they and they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Read verse 15 again. Book of Matthew 26, verse 15. And he said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. So now they, they made an agreement with him for 30 pieces of silver. So this is the betrayer. You understand? Judas was sold to do mischief. Give me that in 1 Maccabees chapter 1. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 15. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 15. 1, 5. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verses 15. Come on. The first book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 15. And made, tw and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. You see that thing? Is that, and made themselves uncircumcised. That's what Judas did. He made himself uncircumcised. 
and forsook the holy covenant, the law. He was one of the twelve. The greatest honor that a man could have, that's what Judas had. He was, he was among the twelve, performing miracles, learning from Christ. You understand? He says what? He says, and join themselves to the heathen because our people were heathen minded. Okay? Their, their, their support was what? They supported Rome. They benefited from Rome. So when they were coming together, they realized that what he's teaching is going against them. So they're going to go to what? Jerry to help them to, de to destroy their own brother. Okay? With the dead meaning Esau. And were sold to do mischief. That's what happened to Judah. He was sold to do mischief. What was the mischief? To have Christ killed. Go back to Matthew 26 now. Verse 15 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 15. And they said unto them, What will eh? and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Read on. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. What did he do? He sought opportunity to betray him. Because that's how betrayers move. Betrayers, they don't look on a do it immediately. Their seed of evil, the seed of mischief is planted in their head. They're going to find opportunities on how they're going to what? They're going to launch the betrayer. That's how deceivers move. You understand? That's how Judas is moved. You understand? Because what, what was the character? What, one of the characteristics of Judas was what? Judas, he hated law and order. He hated command. He hated, he hated being in one. He hated the fact that they were, they were neat as one man. Like you read the book of Judges 20. They were neat as one man. Judas didn't want that. Okay? He let his sin rule over him. Guess what? He started to sort opportunity to betray Christ. Understand what I'm bringing up? Come on, verse 17. Now, no. the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wouldst thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So now they are asking him, Where would you want to, where do you want us to prepare for you the Passover? Because remember now, Passover is, is taking place when? At evening. It's taking place the 14th day at evening. The 14th day at eve. Come on. And he said, go into the city, the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 18. And he said, go into the city to such a man and send to him. The master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at the house with my disciples. At thy house with my disciples. Come on. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Read. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them and they made ready. The Passover. They followed command. Come on, the prince. Now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And the evening was come because that's when Passover starts at evening, because that's when the day starts. Like Genesis one verse five and the rest of the verses, the evening and the morning was the first day. That's what we're, that's what this that's what is being explained here. And now, when evening was come, he sat down with the twelve to do what? To eat the Passover. Come on, verse twenty one. And they, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, one of you shall betray me. You see what he's saying? He says, one of you is going to betray me. Christ is proving it out. One of you is the devil. That's what Christ is saying. Come on. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Because it was bothering the twelve. Is it I? It was boring, or it, whether it was rather it was boring, it was bothering the eleven. Because remember, before that, what Judas did, he went to the high priest to say, you know what, I'm gonna be, I can be, I can do it for thirty pieces of silver. So when Christ is saying what he's saying now, the betrayal has already taken place. Meaning what? The initial conditions have already said Judas has been paid to betray Christ. Come on. Verse twenty-three. And he on. answered and said. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 23. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the stage, the same shall betray me. He says, He that dippeth he that dip his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Go ahead. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. 
rape. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. You see that thing? It says it's better to be dead than to be a betrayer. You rather drop dead. That's what Christ is saying right here. It was better if that man was not even born. That's how disgusting it is to be a Judah. Because Judas, if there's no salvation for Judas, understand that. Come on, verse 25. And by the way, Judas this is not just talking about the men. The women too, by the way. Don't get it twisted. If sisters are as quiet as they are kept, guess what? One of you can be the devil. That can happen also. So don't sleep on the sisters. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Let me just go off it just for a second. Give me the book of Nehemiah real quick. Okay. Give me Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse... Hmm. Give me Nehemiah 6 verse 14. Because this is when they did, they wanted to stop the, 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 the work from being done. They wanted to put Nehemiah to fear from doing the work. Watch this. Nehemiah 6 verse 14. The book of Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 14. My God, think not upon Tobiah mm -mm. and Sanballat according to this. No, no. It says, my God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat. Read that again verse 14. The book of Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 14. My God. Think thou upon to buy and sun planets according to these their works. Uh -huh. And on the prophetess Noah died. You see that thing? And on the prophetess Noah died. So Judas this is not just the men. The women too don't sleep on the sister. Okay, come on. And the prophetess Noah died. Come on. Uh, so sorry, sir, I lost my I lost my parents. Verse 14 again. The book of Nehemiah 6 is 14. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanpalat according to these their works. And on the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. You see that thing right there? Go back to where it was that Matthew 26, verse 24. The book of Matthews. Chapter 26, verse 24. Mm -hmm. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. You see that thing? It had been good for that man or woman that they had not been born on this earth than to be, be, to be a betrayer. Because if you can betray Christ, what makes you think? If Judas could do it, you think that, um, what about the, the disciples that he was among? That's nothing. So guess what? Because when you betray, when you betray us, you guess what? You betray the Lord too. Because we follow the Lord. You understand? Read on. Verse 26 now. Verse 25. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. You see what you see what Christ, you see, Judas was so gone in his mind, right? That he went to ask Christ, was Master, is it I? Then Christ said, Thou hast said, You cutting yourself. You understand? Because he got cut in verse 24. Verse 26 now, come on. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. You see that thing? Take it. This is my body. Come on. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. That's the wine is going into. Give me that in John 6 55. I don't want to precept too much because this class is going to go long. John 6, John chapter 6, verse 55. Read that. The book of John, chapter 6. Verses 65. No, 55. 55. 55. Five. The, the book of John chapter 6, verse 55. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Come on. You see that thing? My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Go ahead. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. You see that thing? Go back to where was that? Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verse 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many 
for the remissions of sins. So the man is talking about the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. He did it for Israel. Come on. But I will, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. He says, I'm not going to drink the fruit of the vine until I return. When we are together in the kingdom, when we are all together in the kingdom, he says what? When we have claimed victory over death in the kingdom of heaven, he says, then I'm going to drink it with you. Go ahead. Verse 30. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Come on. Then said Jesus unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. Mm -hmm. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. You see, you see what he's saying? He says, I will smite the shepherd, meaning what? He's going to be taken. And when he's taken, the sheep of the flock shall be scattered, meaning what? The disciples are going to, are going to, are going to run. They're going to, they're going to flee the scene. That's what he's saying right here. Give me Zechariah 13 verse 7. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7. The book of Zechariah chapter 13. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Awake, O, o sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, said the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand unto, upon the little ones. You see that thing? It's a smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. The sheep is talking about what? At that point, he's making reference to the disciples running away when they took Christ. Okay? So go back to Matthew now, 26, verse 31. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 31. Then Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Come on. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. He says, but after I'm risen, we're going to meet again in Galilee. That's what he's saying. After I'm risen again, keep that in mind. After I'm risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Go ahead. Verse 33. Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet I will never be offended. Yet will I never be offended because Peter, evil. Peter was chacharak. That's the term you can use. Peter was, he was running his mouth right here. And he's the one that actually did it. He's one of the ones that did it. Okay? That, uh, that, denied, that denied Christ. Okay? Read that again. Verse 33. The, the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 33. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will, will I ever be offended. Will I never be offended? Watch this. Give me that Samuel 2, verse 3. First Samuel. So that goes for all of us. Okay? Because a lot of the times that you hear brothers say, I'm with it, I'm with you brothers to the end, guess what? Then problem comes, you don't see the brother no more. Okay, they are offended, they are upset, they are mad. Why? Because they didn't come to court. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Watch this. First book of Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him, Actions are weighed. You see that thing? By him, actions are weighed. Go back to where was that now? Matthew 26, verse 33. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 33. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet I will never be offended. Come on. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto, you, unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. You see what Christ is telling him? It says that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. You're going to deny me three times, man. That's why he's telling Peter. Because remember 33, Peter is saying, listen, I will never be offended. But Christ is telling him, but he didn't take heed to that. You understand? He didn't take heed to that thing. Read on. Verse 35. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet I will not deny thee. Likewise, all said all the likewise also said all the disciples. So now Peter said, Listen, I'm gonna die with you, man. Don't want to catch you. 
I got your back. That's what he's saying. Okay. It is likewise also said all the, the disciples said the same thing. You understand? But it's already prophesied by Zechariah that when the shepherd is smite is smitten, the sheep are gonna scatter. That's why he said in Matthew 26, the same one, it says, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, what is he quoting? Zechariah 13, verse 7. Okay. Read that again, verse 35. The Pukamati chapter 26, verse 35. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet I will not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples. Read. Then came Jesus with them unto a place called Gesh. Gethsemane. Seman. Gethsemane. Gethsemane. And said unto the disciples, Sit ye here, and I will go and pray yonder. He said, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. He said, so wait for me here. I'm going to go and pray. Because guess what? Remember in Matthew 26, verse 2. Read verse 2 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 2. You know that you know that after two days is the feast of Passover. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. You see that thing? Because remember, in verse 17... He commanded the disciples to ready the Passover so they can eat the Passover. Verse 27 and 28, he's going, well, what are they doing? They are breaking bread, they are having wine and all of that. Because what? It's Passover night. Okay? So what we're about to read here, guess what? What the prophets have prophesied before him, now is about to, it, it, it's getting close to, to what? To the betrayer. To be crucified. Okay? That's why he said what he said here. Read that again. Verse 36. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 36. Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. 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 Unto a place called Gethsemane. Uh -huh. And said unto the disciples, Sit ye here, now go and pray yonder. Come on. And he took with him Peter. And the two sons of Zebedee. So and began sons, to be on, sorrowful. Hold on. It says, and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. That's James and John. James and John are the two sons of Zebedee. Come on. Verse 37 again. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Because why? He was a man. Christ was a man. He was born like us. You understand? So now he says, and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy because he knew what he had to do. You understand? He was going to die for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And he already knows how he's going to die. You have to really imagine that thing. You know exactly how you're going to go out. And it's a gruesome, it's a gruesome death. And you know you have to do it. So now he's starting to what? He's starting to be, he's starting to get emotional. Okay, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. So remember, Peter, James, and John was going to be the leaders after he's gone. So that's why he's calling them here. Okay, come on, verse 38. Thirty, 38. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tell ye here and watch with me. You see what he's telling them? It says, that's some heavy stuff. My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry he here and watch with me. So he's telling them, listen, watch with me. Have my back. Why? Because the time is at hand. The time is coming now. It's getting close. Okay, come on. Verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible that this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. You see what he's saying? He says, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Meaning what? I don't want to do this. That's what he's saying. I don't want to do this. Nevertheless, not as I will, because my, it's not my will, but as thou will. Meaning what? So that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Okay, come on. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? You see what he's telling them? 
Because now he's getting upset. He's went to pray. When he comes back, the brothers are sleeping. He's like, wait a minute. Could you not wash with me? You understand? One hour and be awake. He found them asleep. Wait, verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see what he's saying? He's talking about himself. He says, the spirit indeed is willing. I want to do this, but the flesh is weak. You understand? Because why? He was a man. He was born like us. He understood the things that we go through. So now and is now, the Lord will be obviously, the most I show you, mom, is why he's going to go out. Because when Christ walked the earth, what he was he reading? The law and the prophets. And the prophets prophesied about him. So did Moses. Okay, read on. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Thy will be done. He is getting himself together now. Come on, verse 43. And he came and found them asleep again, and their eyes were heavy. For their For eyes were heavy. Their eyes were heavy. Because they were tired. Okay, they were exhausted. Come on. And he left them and went away again. And prayed the third time, saying the same words. Read. Then cometh he to the disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Come on. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. He says, The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners, meaning what the hour is at hand when he's going to be taken away and the sheep will scatter. Come on. Come on, verse 46. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. He says, he is at hand that doth betray me. Who's that? That's Judas Iscariot. He says, rise, let us get, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Read on, verse 47. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Remember what Judas did. Remember Judas went to the chief, the, the palace of Ephesus. Okay, so what we're reading here, when verse 46 is explaining um, the one that is at hand that is going to be saved. Verse 47 names who that is. Judas Iscariot. Come on, verse 48. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, that man is he. No, Hold no. them fast. Read that again. Read it right. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 48. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. So now this is Judas speaking to the people, to those, to those, um, to those soldiers that came with him. Because remember, the high priest they gave, he gave him what? An answer to go and collect Christ. So now he says, now he that betrayed him gave, him gave them a sign. He gave the man that he was walking with a sign, saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. Why is he saying this? Because guess what? The disciples, they look the same. Remember, they are family. These are family members here. You understand? Like us today. So somebody gets there and says, which one is it? Okay, so the one that I'm going to go in there to kiss, the same is the one that he must be taken away. You understand? Because this is also going into what this is letting me know something. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 real quick. Mm. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 verse 9. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men, and an unspotted life is old age. Is the wisdom is the gray hair unto men. So at this point, Christ didn't have white, he didn't have that white woolly hair that we read about in Revelation 1 verse 14. Because if he did have it, it was going to be easy to do what? To spot him. Because Judas was simply going to say, the one with white woolly hair, that's the one right there. He's the one that we need to collect. So at this point, he didn't have that. Okay. Go back to Matthew 26 now, verse 49. 
the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 49. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. What did he say? Hail, Master, and kissed him. He, this, he, this is now, he's mocking him. He's flaunting. He's being disrespectful. That's what Judas is doing right here. He says, and forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. You see that thing? Judas was the devil. Come on, verse 50. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? He said, why did you come? Then came, you see what he's calling him? says, friend, wherefore art thou come? Come on. Wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. So now, at this point, so keep that in mind, verse 50. Keep verse 50 in mind. Okay, keep verse 50 in mind. The certain thing that the, because Luke is the, is the first gospel. Luke comes before Matthew. Luke comes before Matthew, okay? So there's certain things that Matthew's gonna say that Luke is gonna give the most, give, Luke gives the most detail of the account, okay? Watch this. Um, keep reading, read verse 52 now. The book of Matthew. Read, read, read verse 51, read verse 51. The book of Matthew. Chapter 26, verses 51. Mm -hmm. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and threw him and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. You see that thing? So one of them is as he drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. So you really have to imagine the type of crew that Christ was rolling with. These were not wimps, okay? They were men of war. You, you, can you, do you imagine the level of accuracy you have to have? How to handle the sword to cut off a man's ear? Just the ear. You take the sword out and cut the ear off. You really have to imagine that thing. The level of precision. These men were gifted, were gifted in war. You understand? Read that again, verse 51. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 51. And behold... One of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and threw his sword and struck a servant to the high priest and smote off his ear. Come on. Then Jesus said unto him, put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. You see that thing? Because guess what? The apostle Peter, hmm, there, I just gave the answer. Come on, let's read you again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 52. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall be per shall perish with the sword. Come on. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall present, he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? So Christ is saying, Listen, do you not think that I can actually call up to the heavens and they brought 12 legions of angels and destroy you all? That's what Christ is saying here. Come on. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? That thus it must be. You see that thing? He says, I cannot do that because the scriptures must be fulfilled. Wait. In that same hour, said Jesus to the multitudes, I ye come out against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple. And he laid no hold on me. You see what he's saying? He says, I say daily with you teaching in the temple. So now you want to come and take me now? What is this going into also? This goes into today. You sit down, you break bread with the brothers. You give them the scriptures. You break the scriptures down. This is what this means. This is what that means. And guess what? One of them is sitting there. They're seeking opportunity on how to betray. On how to destroy from within. You see that thing? Just be mindful of such things, okay? Come on. Verse 56. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Read verse 56 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 56. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Remember, the people came with Judas, 
You understand? To come and take Christ. What, what did the disciples do? The last part of that precept, verse 56. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now watch this. Give me Matthew 26, verse 31. Because I know some of you forgot. Matthew 26, verse 31. Read that again. The book of Matthew 26, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me. Uh -uh. The book of Matthew 26, verse 31. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. That's, that's what we're reading in verse 56. That's the prophecy. Is that then all the disciples forsook him and fled. You see that thing? Go back to Matthew 26, verse 56 now. What, you know what this goes into? Matthew. Verse 56 goes into brothers making promises and listen, brothers, we're with you and all of that. We're going to war and all of that. And then problems arise in your life. You understand? Or you're still thinking about, um, you're still thinking about the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the stuff that you left in the world. Guess what? You leave your brothers at the time of war. Yeah, you leave your brothers at the time of war. Because remember, the disciples told they said to Christ, listen, we're not gonna be offended. You know, we're gonna die with you. We're gonna die for you. We've got your back. When it happened, guess what happened to them? They fled. You understand? They fled the sea, leaving their brothers at the time of war. You understand? That's why the, the name of the camp is called Soldiers of Christ. That's not an accident. It's by design. Soldiers, they stay on the mission. Soldiers is about what? Soldiers is about the mission. No matter what happens, stay on the mission. Don't get distracted by nothing. Don't get pulled off. Don't get pulled in into the affairs of this life. You stay on the mission. Okay? You don't, no man left behind. That's why this camp is called Soldiers of Christ. Okay? You don't leave no man behind. We are at war. For the minds of our brothers and sisters this day. Understand that. Matthew 26, verse 56. The book of Matthew 26, verse 56. But all this was done and the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Really? And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest. Where the scribes and the elders were assembled. So the scribes and, and the, the scribes and, and, the, and the Pharisees and the elders, they gathered themselves together at Caiaphas' palace, where Judas went to get 30 pieces of silver to betray Christ. Come on. But Peter followed him afar off but Peter unto the high priest's palace. But Peter followed him afar off uh -huh. unto the high priest's palace. So Peter went after them. The apostle Peter, he went after them. He followed after them from afar off, from a farther distance, but he followed after them to see where they were taking him. Come on. And went in and sat down huh? and sat with the servants to see the end. You see that thing? Now, we're going to, we come back here. Okay, so keep that in mind. Give me Mark 14, 43 now. Mark chapter 14, verse 43. Remember, Peter went after them. Peter went after them, after they took Christ. Mark 14, verse 43. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 43. Mm -hmm. And immediately, while he had spake, come at Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with souls and staves, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Come on. So Mark is giving the, uh, the, the same account that Matthew did. You know? And he that betrayed him had given them a token saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, the same as he, take him and lead him away safely. So you see, you see what you see the account of Mark in verse 44. Remember what the sign was. The sign was the kiss. It says the same as he. Take him and lead him, lead him away, lead him away safely. Because Judas didn't think that they were going to kill him. Judas didn't think that. He didn't think that they were going to kill him. That's why he is saying. Take him and lead him away safely. So Mark is giving the account of what Judas said when they took Christ. Taking and lead him away safely. You understand? Come on. Verse 45. The 
book of Mark chapter 14, verse 45. And as soon as he was come, he goes straightway to him and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. Read that again, verse 45. The book of Mark chapter 14, verse 45. And as soon as he was come, he goes straightway to him and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. You see that thing? So this is Judas now going to Christ, the Master, Master, and kissed him. Hold it, Matthew 26, verse 50. Matthew 26, verse 50. Go back there. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 50. Actually, read verse 49. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 49. And forth he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. You see that thing? Hail, Master, and kissed him. Hail, Master, and kissed him. That's what he said. In the book of Mark, it says what? It says, he said, Master, Master, and kissed him. Okay. Read verse 50 now. Verses 50. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid, hand, and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Go back to Mark chapter 14 now. Mark chapter 14, read verse 44 again. The book of Mark chapter 14, verse 44. And he that betrayed him had given them a token saying, whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Take him and lead him away, away safely. He says, take him and lead him away safely. So Mark is giving you a different account. He says, they say, take him and lead him away safely. In Matthew 26, verse 49, it says, hail master and kiss him. Matthew, Mark chapter 14 now, verse 45. The book of Mark chapter 14, verse 45. And as soon as he was come, he goes straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. Master, Master, and kissed him. In, in Matthew 26, he says, Hail, Master, and kissed him. He says, Master, Master, and kissed him. Come on, verse 46. Verse 46. And they laid their hands on him and took him. Come on. And smote and smote a servant to the high priest and cut off his ear. No, 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 no. Verse 46 again. The book of Mark chapter 14 was 46. And they laid their hands on him and took him. You see that thing? And they laid their hands on him and took him. Read on. 47. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant to the high priest and cut off his ear. That's what we read um, earlier in Matthew 26. Read on. 46. 48. And they, that's 48 now. The book, of, the book of Mark chapter 14 was 48. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me. Read. I was daily with you in the temple teaching. And ye took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Go ahead, verse 50. Verse 15, uh, verse 50, and they all forsook him and fled. You see that thing? That's the same thing we read in Matthew 26, verse 31, which is what was prophesied by Zechariah 18, verse 7. And they all forsook him and fled. Okay, come on, verse 51. And they followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body, and young man laid hold on him. And the young man laid hold on him. So they had this young man that was bugged out. He was sick. He was crazy. Okay, come on. Verse 52. Verses 52. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. You see that thing? He was crazy. Come on. Verse 53 now. The book of Mark, chapter 14. Verse 50. Uh, lost my parents, sir. Mark 14, verse 53. Come on. The book of Mark chapter 14, verse 53. And they laid Jesus away to the high priest, and with and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and scribes. Come on. And Peter followed him afar off. Even unto the place of the highest priest. Even and he and sat with the on. servants. It says, and Peter followed him afar off, like we read in Matthew 26. Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. 
So now Mark is giving another detail what Peter, when Peter followed him, what did he do? He says he got to the palace and warmed himself at the fire because what? It was cold. Okay, read that again. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verses verse 51. 54, verse 54. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 54. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. So Peter warmed himself at the fire. We come in back here. So hold that point. Give me Matthew 26, 59. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 59. Mm -hmm. Now the chief priests and elders and all that council and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. So now remember they brought him to the to Caiaphas' house. Is that the chief priests and the elders on all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. They needed to find an excuse to kill him. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus 23, real quick. Exodus chapter 23 and verse. That's one. Exodus 23, verse one. Watch this. They are raising a false report. They are going against the commandment here. See that? The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse one. Thou shalt not write, thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked or the unrighteous witness. To be a what? To be. An unrighteous witness to be an unrighteous witness because that's what they were doing they were collecting unrighteous witnesses to speak against christ okay go back to matthew 26 now verse 59 again the book of matthews 26 verses 59 now the chief priests and elders and all that council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. Come on. But found none. So they didn't find any false witnesses to speak against Christ. They don't. But found none. Though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses. They, out of all those many witnesses, they finally found two wicked Negroes to go against Christ, to speak evil, to speak the, to speak lies. You understand? Just so they can have him put to death. Verse 51. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 51, verse 61. And said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. So because remember, Christ was moving around teaching. He went to different synagogues to teach the gospel. You understand? As he was doing the same thing the Apostle Paul was explaining according to the scriptures, that's what we're reading here. Okay? So one of one of the two witnesses said, I'm able to destroy the temple. He said, this is what Christ said. I'm able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. So that's what they are saying, he said. Okay? So they are, they, that's what he said, but that's not what he meant is what they are explaining. So what they are explaining what he said is not what he meant, what they are explaining what he said. If you understand what I'm saying. Okay, give me John 21, John 2 verse 18. John, give me saying John chapter 2 verse 18. The book of John, chapter 2 verse 18. Then unto the Jews and said unto him, we saw... What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Come on. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. You see what he's saying? Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Go ahead. Can you hear you there, sir? Verse 20. Come on. The book of John, chapter 2, verse 20. Then said the Jews, 40 and, 60, 40 and 6 years was his temple in building, and would thou rear it up in three days? So they are telling them, so listen, it took 46 years to build the temple. And you saying you're going to what? You're going to destroy it in three days? Go ahead. But he spake of the temple of his body. So you see what he, that's what he meant. 
but the reason, the way they are bringing it, they are putting it up there, they are what? They are making him seem like he's saying he's going to destroy the physical building and he's going to rebuild it again in three days. So they are lying on him. You understand? Watch this. Give me, go back to Matthew 26, verse 62 now. Matthew 26, verse 62. Let's pick it up from there. The book of Matthew, so the 26, verses 52. Hold on. Okay, read that again, verse 62. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 62. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer thou not, answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses, what is it which these witness against thee? Okay, so because they are realizing that he's not answering them a word. Watch this, read it on, verse 63. Lost my parents, sir. Verse 63, come on. The, the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 63. But Jesus held his peace. He said nothing to them, come on. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. He says, listen, you must tell us whether you are the Son of God. Because, but remember, Caiaphas knew this. Caiaphas knew this thing. He knew this thing. He knew that he was the son of God. He knew that thing. But because he got the devil on him, he, he asked it anyway because of what? Watch this. Hold this. Give me Exodus. Exodus chapter 23. Watch this. Let's see what the Lord says about that. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 2. Watch this. Exodus chapter 3 verse 23. 22. No, Exodus 23, verse 2. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Come on. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to raise judgment. You see that thing? That's what Caiaphas was doing. He knew the truth, but he decided, no, 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 I'm not going to do that because I've got, I've got the demons on me. You understand? The multitude, which was what the scribes, the Pharisees, and the elders, that gathered and all assembled at his palace. Okay? Go back to Matthew 26 now, verse 63 again. Matthew 26, verse 62, verse 63. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 63. Uh -huh. But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God, Three. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now he's prophesying about the second coming. Right? He says, You're going to see me on that day. You will see me on that day. Okay, read on, verse 65. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, he had spoken blasphemy. What further need? What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now we have heard his blasphemy. You see that thing? Now they are saying, listen, we don't need no witnesses no more. You see, he's speaking blasphemous things. He's blasphemy because of what he said in verse 64. When he says, you're going to see the Son of Man on the right hand of power, meaning on the right hand of the Lord, the Most High God, and coming in the clouds of heaven, the second coming of his of, of the second, his second return. That's what he's talking about here. Okay? So because he said that, they said, no, he's, he's speaking blasphemy. Go ahead, verse 66. Verse 66. What think ye? They answered and said, he is, he is guilty of death. Because of what he said in verse 64. Come on. Then did they spit in his face and buffet him. Hmm. And others smote him with the palm of their hands. Meaning what? They were slapping him. They were punching him also. Come on. Verse 68. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 68. Saying, prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is, who is he that smote thee? You see what they were doing? They said, prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Because there's some details there that are not being mentioned. We're going to deal with that. Come on. 
the book of Matthew, so 26, verse 66. Verse 69. Verse 69. Now, Peter was without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 50, 69. Now, Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. So now the Apostle Peter, remember, the Apostle Peter followed Christ. He followed Christ, okay, to where he was taken. So what we're reading here says he sat without in the palace. Mark is going to explain where, where, at where exactly was he, seated, where, where he seated, okay? And a damsel came unto him, saying, meaning a woman, a servant of the high priest, thou also was with Christ of Galilee. He said, you also was with Christ. You understand? Read on. Verse 17. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. You see what he's saying? He's denying Christ. And I said, listen, I don't know him. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him. You know? And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there. This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. So another woman saw him and said, yeah, this also, he was with Christ. He walked with Christ. Come on. And again, he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. You see, you see what he's saying? He says, again, he did it. Second time he's denying Christ now. He's denying. I don't know this man. Read on. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereaveth thee. Bereaveth thee. He says, for thy speech bereaveth thee. Meaning what? The way you are speaking, you are speaking exactly like Christ and them would speak, the disciples that follow Christ. You understand? Because today you see how we speak in the garden. That's exactly what he's talking about. Because Galilee was a what? Was a lockshin. A kasi. You understand? Collocation. And the way we speak, is very different from how everybody else speaks. Read on. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. You see that thing? He started, he, he was even getting pissed off. Okay, he started to curse and swear, saying, I know not them. I don't know this man. I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately the cock crew. Go ahead, verse 75. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which saith unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Mm -hmm. And he went out and wept bitterly. So he remembered what Christ told him. Because remember, Peter said, listen, I'm not going to deny you. I'm going to die for you. I'm going to be there. I'm going to act out your back. But then he remembered this thing. Give me that in Matthew 26, verse 84. Because this is what Christ said unto him. And he remembered what Christ said. Read that, Matthew 26, verse 34. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 34. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night, before the cock crow, before, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. You see that thing? Thou shalt deny me thrice. And the apostle Peter denied this. He says, no, I'm not. And what we're reading here, that's exactly what happened. And he remembered. That's why go back to Matthew 26, verse 75 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 75. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. He remembered what he did. Remember when the, when the cock crow is what time? The early week of the morning. Remember the Passover started when at eve. So now these are events that are occurring at, during the Passover night. Now we are approaching the early weeds of the morning. That's why now the cock, the cock is crow. The when the cock crew. You understand? This is the early hours of the morning now. The same day of Passover. You understand? Watch this. Remember he said, um, before the cock crew, thou shalt deny me thrice. Give me Mark chapter 14. Mark 14 verse 55 now. Mark 14, verse 55. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 55. Remember, what we read in, in Mark, if you, some of you still remember, 
we left off at verse 54 when the apostle Peter was warming himself at the fire. Read verse 55 now. Mark 14, verse 55. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 55. Uh -huh. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death mm -hmm. and found none. That's what we just read in Matthew 26. Read on. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. Because remember, they brought many false witnesses like we went, in, we went to Exodus 23. They brought many false witnesses against Christ, but none of the witnesses agreed together. They didn't have their stories lined up. Okay, come on. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying. So these, these, we these hold on, these, the, 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 these, these, what we have, they have been mentioned in verse 57, he says, and there arose certain and bear false witness. It was the two witnesses that they found in Matthew 26. Mark is not mentioning that. He just said, and these, and there arose certain. He's not, made, he's not telling you how many they are. Okay, come on. Verse 58, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. Mm -hmm. And within three days, I will build another made without hands. Come on. But neither saw did their witness agree together. Even though, even those that said what they said, they didn't agree together also. Come on. I and the high priest what? stood up mm -hmm. in the midst. Hold on. Read verse 59 again. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 59. But neither so did their witness agree together. Okay, stop right there. Give me Mark now, chapter 14, verse 29. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 29. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. You see what he's saying? Yet will not. I mean, I'm not going to be offended. That's the same account that we read in Matthew. Read. Eh? And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. You see what Mark is explaining now? He says, Before the cock crow, the, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. He is mentioning, he's explaining now. Because Matthew didn't explain it. He said, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Mark is explaining before the cock crow, before the cock. Before the cock crew twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. All right, jump down to verse 66. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 66. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. You see that thing? When the apostle Peter was beneath in the palace now, in the palace. Remember, it says he was afar off. He says, when he was in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. Read on. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, read that again, verse 67. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 67. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, and thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, hold this. Jump up to verse 54. Mark 14, verse 54. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 54. And Peter followed him afar off, mm -hmm. even into the palace of the high priest. And Please. he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. He sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Jump down, jump back down to verse 67. Mark chapter 14, verse 67. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. So this woman is saying, You also, Peter, you were with Christ. You were walking with Christ. Watch this, verse 58 now. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. That's the first time when the cock is crowed. Because what also does the first time the apostle Peter is denying Christ. 
Okay, read on, verse 59. And the maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them. This is one of them, meaning what? This is, because remember it says, another maid came and saw him in Matthew. The apostle, the, the apostle Mark is saying, listen, and a maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them. Come on, verse 70. And he denied it again. Mm -hmm. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, surely thou art one of them, mm. for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeth there too. You see that thing, thy, thy speech derailed it. That's what we read in Matthew. So this is the second time when the apostle Peter now is denying Christ again. Come on. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. Mm, come on. And the second time the cock crew, mm. and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crew twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Come on. And when he thought thereon, he wept. You see that thing? So Mark is giving it says, Before the cock the, before the cock crew twice, thou shalt deny me thrice, Peter. You're gonna deny me, man. You're gonna say you don't know me. He says, and, he, and when he thought thereon, he wept. Watch this. Give me Luke 22, verse 14 now. Luke 22, verse 14. There's a reason why I'm going through this. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 40. Verse 40. Mm -hmm. And when he was at the palace, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Remember what we read. Give me that in Matthew 26, verse 41. He's coming back here. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Mm -hmm. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but flesh is weak. You see what Mark, Matthew, he, he added some extra. It says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Luke is not explaining that. Go back to Luke 22, verse 40. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 40. And when he was at the palace, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Come on. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. When he says about a stone's cast, meaning what? The distance between him and them was... The distance, between, the, the distance that is measured by you throwing a stone, that's the distance between him and them. That's why it says, about a stone's cast, and kneel down and pray. Read on, verse 42. Say, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You see that thing? Because at this point, guess what happened? He was starting to feel it because he's a man. Okay, you are starting to feel that, you know what? Yeah, okay. Now I'm feeling it that I'm going to be taken. Okay, that's what is going on here. He's starting to feel it because he's a man. Okay, verse 42 again. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 42. Mm -hmm. Say, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. We watch this. And and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. You see that thing? Mark and Matthew don't explain this part. Luke explains it. As he was going through this, getting ready to be taken and be crucified, guess what? An angel had to come down from heaven to come and comfort him. To say, listen, you, you're going to be all right. You're going to get through this. Don't worry. I got you. The angel had to come down from heaven to comfort him. Because at this point, he was feeling it, said, listen, I want to do this. Okay, come on. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He was sweating. He was, he was scared. He was afraid. He was, he was terrified of what he's about to do. Okay, let's jump up to verse 42, but this is what he said. Verse 42, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. 
nevertheless, not my will, but thy be done. Jump down to verse 44 again. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. Mm -hmm. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Read on. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. They were sleeping for sorrow. Come on, watch this. And said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. He is upset now. He is upset because he's saying, What? You couldn't watch with me? You couldn't wait for me to pray? That's what he that's what he is upset. Come on, verse 47. And while he yet spake, behold the multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Now watch this. Read verse 47 again. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 47. And while he had spake, behold the multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. So now Luke is giving you the account before Judas came. He's telling you what Christ did, because remember, says the hour has come, we need to go. The one that is coming to betray me is on his way. Okay, and then Judas came unto him with the with the entourage that was, was given him by the high priest. So now he kissed him and he said, that's the one. The one I'm going to kiss, he's the one that is going to be the one that you have to take away. Now watch this. Notice here, when Christ was praying, because this is now before Judas came. He's letting you know, Luke is giving you the account of what happened before Judas Iscariot came. Because he started to pray, the angel had to come down to comfort him. Matthew doesn't explain it. Mark doesn't explain it. Luke is filling in the gaps of what happened before Judas arrived. Okay, verse 47 again. With Luke chapter 22, verse 47. And while he had spake, behold the multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Read. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? So now, you see, at this point, Luke is giving you the whole statement now that was said. Let's back up. Matthew 26, verse 50. We're coming back. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 15. And, no, verse, verse 49. Read Matthew. Um, Matthew 26, verse 49. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 49. Mm -hmm. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Watch what Christ said. You know? And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. You see what he said? He says, friend, wherefore art thou come? Friend, wherefore art thou come? Mark 14, verse 45. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 45. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. Okay, hold on. Let me see, let me see. Read verse 44. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 44. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. Read on. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. He says, Master, Master, and kissed him. Let me see, let me see now. Okay, so at this point, if you notice, Mark, Mark doesn't really say anything about what Christ said to do that here. Read that again, verse 45. Watch this. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 45. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. Watch this. Read verse 46. And they laid their hands on him and took him. You see that thing? Mark doesn't explain what Christ said. But Luke explains it. Matthew does also. Read that again now. Go back to Luke 22. 
Luke 22, verse 48. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 48. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? You see that thing? Because in Matthew he said, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Friend, wherefore art thou come? He is saying, he's, he's, he's telling you the whole thing. Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? You see that thing? After Judas kissed him, that's what Christ said. This is Luke's account of what happened. Read on. When they, when they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? You see that thing? Luke is explaining what happened when they arrived. Because Mark, Matthew doesn't explain it. Mark doesn't explain it. They just said they took him and they left. They took him and they left and they are, the disciples, they fled after Jesus tried to take him. Luke is telling you what the disciples, the 12, said to him was the 11th now because Judas is the devil. The 11th, what they said to Christ when Judas came with the entourage. Verse 49 again. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 49. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Shall we what? Shall we smite with the sword? Shall we smite with the sword? Shall we fight? That's what the, the 11 is saying now. Come on. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Now he's telling you which ear that he cut off. The right ear. Go ahead. Verse 51. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. You see that thing? Now you can imagine this. After, after this brother cut off, cut off this brother's ear, what did Christ do? He still healed the man. He put his ear back onto his head. But they still wanted to kill him. You understand? Read on. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders, which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. Read. When I was daily with you in the temple, he stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. The power of darkness, meaning what? The betrayal that's going to take place. Come on. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And the apostle Peter followed afar off. Same account in Mark and Matthew. Come on. And when they had kindled the fire in the midst of the hall, when they what? And were set down together. When they kindled a fire in the midst of the hall. So now he's giving you the location of where the fire was kindled. In the midst of the hall. Where? where? At Caiaphas' palace. In the midst of the hall. That's where the fire was kindled. Come on. And were set down together. Mm -hmm. Peter sat down among them. So the apostle Peter sat down among them. Watch this. Read on. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire. Mm -hmm. And earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. This man also was with him. Go ahead. And he denied him, saying, woman, I know him not. He said, listen, I don't know who they are. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know that man. I don't know him. See? And after a little while, another saw him and said, Hold thou on. art also. Wait, wait, wait. You, see, you see what Luke is explaining now? Is that after a little while, another, another man saw him, another woman. So it's not the same woman that is, is explaining this the second time. It's another woman that is doing the same thing that the first woman did. You understand? Read verse 58 again. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 58. And after a little while, another saw him and mm -hmm. said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Man, I'm not. He's denied. <laughs> He's denied this thing. Come on, this denied. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. He's a Galilean. He's a Galilean. Meaning what? We know him. You understand? That's what we're, that's what we're going on. That's what's going down right here. Okay, read on. Verse 60. And Peter said, man, 
I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he had spake, the cock crew. You see that thing? And immediately while he had spake, the cock crew. Read on, verse 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. What did he do? And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Remember, the, what, where was the fire key at the hall? So it says, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Go ahead. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me twice. Remember, Mark tells you how many times the apostle Peter how many times the cock crew? He says that before the cock crew, the cock, before the cock crew twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Luke doesn't say that, but Mark does. Okay, read on, verse 62. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Because he remembered, remember now, he says, and the Lord looked, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord. So Peter saw the Lord looking at him. But let's get some details on that. Give me John 18, verse 1. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook, said John. And where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples? Read that again. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron. Where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples? So now, this is the places where the Christ would go, usually. Where was a garden into the, into the which he entered and his disciples? Watch this. Verse 2. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place for jesus often often times resorted thither with his disciples so you see judas knew there are places where they go okay this is where they teach this is where they teach this is where they stay because that's how betrayers do they have to know where people stay and where they teach how we move you understand that's what judas is doing that's why he knew where to go read that again verse two the book of John, chapter 18, verse 2. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. You, you see, I'll give an example. You see, there's a camp. There's a camp that, that, that used to follow us around wherever we went to teach. Okay? So this one time, one of the brothers says, listen, they, they came, one of the, they, very early on, uh, when there was see, when I, when it was the, the brothers that left that I was still teaching with them, and they came to the one of them came to camp, and the first time he came, he didn't have no fringes, no fringes, no what none of that, okay, but he said no, I keep the laws and all of that. I asked where's the fringes, okay, no, I forgot them, okay, fine. Then the second time he came, also. Now he came, he came by himself, he had fringes the second time, okay? Then the third time, he came again. The fourth time, this is later on now, is when we were, when we were teaching in Midrash. No, no, when we were teaching in Santi. He said, no, I want to come and teach with you. I said, listen, you can come, but you're not teaching, you're going to read, okay? And he read, we said the whole, we taught the whole day. Then the, another time he came again. This time he came with a group of brothers. And guess what he said? He was like, listen, if we didn't find you in Fenton, we're going to come here. And I said there, I'm like, who does that? So much work that we need to do in Israel, but you say, like, if we didn't find you in Fenton, we were going to come to meet them to come and look for you. And the reason why he came is because of what? He didn't come because he genuinely wanted to come and see us. No. He came because he wanted to see us, the people that he fought. He was coming to what? He was coming to flaunt. He was coming to brag that I've got people now. That's what he was doing. Okay. But the question I, I was asking myself was like, so that means these men that are traveling with him for so, 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 so much distance, like such long distances to go and look for us, it was just the two of us in Poland. None of them actually said, you know what? 
You mean to tell me we cannot divide ourselves up and go to different locations to see the gospel? It's what, six, seven of us, but we're coming to see two brothers each. That's some heavy stuff. So what Judas is doing here, that's exactly what Judas is doing. You understand? John 18, read verse 2 again. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Read on. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. So now they are going to war. They are going to collect Christ. Remember, John is giving the account now of what happened, what Mark explained, what Matthew explained, what Luke explained. John is giving the account. There's some detail. Read on. Verse 4. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? You see that thing? John is now giving the account of what happened. Because when they came, Christ went forth before the disciples said, Who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Come on. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. I am he. I'm the and one Judas that also. He says, I'm the one that you're looking for. Because he went forth. He went forward before the disciples. And because they said, listen, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He says, I'm the one that you're looking for. Really? And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. So Judas was right there in the midst with them. Come on. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Read verse 6 again, because some of you might not understand what just went, what just went down here. Read that again. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 6. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. So Christ is saying, listen, as soon as he said unto them, I'm the one, guess what happened to them? They fell backward. They, they went backward and fell to the ground. Just by speaking, he was able to what? To push them back by just his words and they fell to the ground. So what was Christ doing here? He was flexing. He was flexing. He said, listen, if really I wanted to destroy you, I would wipe you out right now. You understand? He was what? He was really just saying, listen, hold on now. Let's not get it twisted. If I really wanted to wipe you out, I can do it. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. So you really have to imagine the level of discipline that Christ had. Because he could, he, he could just command the powers of the heavens to come down and wreak havoc on the earth. But he chose not to. You understand? Read on, verse 7. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. So while I was down, he said, okay, he asked him again, so who are you looking for again? So that's the mindset. Read on. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. He said, if you're looking for me, let the disciples go. Because the idea was, they wanted to gather all of them and put all of them to death. He said, that's not going to happen. If you're looking for me, then you take me. Leave the disciples out of there. Come on. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake, of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. You see that thing? Those that you gave me, I lost none. Hold this. Give me John 17. John chapter 17 and verse hmm, 3, verse 4. John 17, verse 4. The book of John chapter 17, verse 4. You know what? I have glorified. Hold on. Read verse 2. Read verse 2. John 17, verse 2. Book of John, chapter 17, verse 2. Mm -hmm. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. The one that has given him, the one that he did not lose. Go ahead, verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Come down to verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Read on, verse 9. I pray for them, 
I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. You see that thing? But for them which thou hast given me. But for them which thou hast given me. Go back to John now, chapter 18. John 18, verse 9. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 9. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake. Of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Come on. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So now the apostle John is telling you who cut the other, who cut the servant that was the high priest's ear. That was the apostle Peter. The apostle, the apostle Peter was gangster. You need to understand the apostle Peter. That's why the apostle Peter was saying, I'm going to fight. Don't worry, I got you. I got your back. Okay? He's, John is giving you the name of the of the seven that his ear was cut off. Malchus. Verse 10 again. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Really? Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? It says, uh, it says listen, the thing that the Lord has, the most that God has commanded me to do, I have to do. The scriptures must be fulfilled. So I have to drink of that cup. Okay, come on. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus, bound him. Really? And led him away to Annas first. Stop right For there. he was. They, hold on, they did what? Read verse 13 again. And the book of John, chapter 18, verse 13. And led him away to Annas first. You see that thing? Before he went to Caiaphas, Christ was taken to Annas first. Before he was taken to Caiaphas, the high priest, when they assembled themselves with Peter, you know, he went afar off after them. They took him to, Chia to Annas first before he was taken to Caiaphas' place. Okay, read that again, verse 13. Because Caiaphas and Annas were the high priest at the same time, which was not according to the scriptures, but they did it anyway because they were full of demonic, abominable stuff. Read that again, verse 13. John chapter 18, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas. Mm which was the high priest that same year. He was the high priest that same year. You know, verse 14. Now Caiaphas was he, which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. So now Caiaphas, he knew, Caiaphas knew um, that Christ is the son of God, but he still asked him when he read the book of Matthew, he asked him, Tell us if you are the son of God. But he knew. Watch this. Give me John 11, verse 49. The book of John, chapter 11, verse 49. Mm -hmm. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Come on. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. The whole nation is talking about all 12. Come on, verse 51. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. You see that thing? That Christ should die for that nation. So go back to John 18. John 18, verse 14. Book of John, chapter 18, verse 14. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Really? And Simon Peter followed Jesus and saw so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. So now the apostle Peter followed Christ where he was taken as a so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. So this disciple is the one that, that Christ loved, 
Okay, you talk about John. That's John. Read on, verse 16. Watch this. But Peter stood at the door without. Read that again. Then went out that. But Peter stood at the door without. So, but the apostle Peter stood at the door. At the door. At the door. Remember, they're telling you where the, where the fire was, at the hall. Where the apostle, the apostle Peter was standing at the door. That's why when Christ saw, when he, when he remembered what Christ said, he saw Christ. They locked eyes. That's when he, he wept, he ran out, and he was weeping, bitten. Because him and Christ's eyes, they locked. And Christ said, remember what I told you, Peter? Remember what I said to you, man? Read that again, verse 16. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 16. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple which was known unto the high priest mm -hmm. and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. So the apostle Peter was brought inside because there was a maid that was at the door that said, you are one of them. You understand? Read on. Then says the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, art not thou also one of these men's disciples? He saith, I am not. He denied it. So he's denying it again. John is giving you the cup now. Come on. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. You see that thing, for it was cold. It was cold. Read on. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Come on. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I never taught in the synagogue. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Really? That's the doctrine that he was said he was teaching, and it was only teaching that doctrine to the Jews. Come on. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. What I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. He says, ask those that are followed, that are following, why are you asking me for? Ask them so they can tell you what they had when I was teaching. Come on. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Come on. Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? He says, if I have spoken evil, prove what the prove the evil thing that I said. But if well, why smitest thou me? Come on, verse 24. Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. So before Annas could release him, he tortured him. They, he tortured Christ. So Annas tortured Christ, and after he did it, he sent him to Caiaphas. Read on. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself, and they said therefore unto him, Art now thou also one of his disciples? He denied it, and said, I am not. He says, I am not, so he's denying it now. This is John's account, you know? One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, <laughs> says, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? You see that thing? He said, didn't I see you in the garden with him? You are the one. You are one of them, Peter. I saw you. The one that his, his ear was cut off. Really? Which Christ here? Come on. Peter then denied again. Mm -hmm. And immediately the cock crew. And immediately the cock crew. Come on. This is the second time now. Come on. Then let they, Jesus, from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Because remember now, read verse 28 again. I'm going to explain it. Read verse 28 again. Book of John, chapter 18, verse 28. Then let they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Remember, the judgment hall is talking about, uh, talk about uh, Pontius Pilate now. 
Pontius Pilate is going into, if that's what he's going into when he says, they went, uh, then Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. This is the early hours now of the Passover. Remember, it started in the evening. Now is the, now the hours leading to the morning, the morning hours of the same day of the Sabbath, I mean of the Passover. So what we're reading here is that now they are going to take him to Pontius Pilate. Because remember, the scribes and Pharisees and the high priests, they reported to who? To Rome. Rome was the one that was what? Rome was the one that was what that was controlling everything that they did. So they could not do anything to Christ, meaning what? Kill him without the consent from Rome. You understand? Matthew 27, verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people to counsel against Jesus to put him to death. When the morning was come, when the morning was come, that morning was come, remember, these are hours leading up to the what? Leading up to the morning hours of the summer. I mean, of the Passover, excuse me, of the Passover. Read verse one again. The book of Matthew chapter 27, verse one. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people to counsel against Jesus to put him to death. Read. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. You see that thing? The reason why they took him, they wanted to deliver him to Pontius Pilate. Read. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. So now when Judas See, realized, hold on, when Jesus, Judas realized that, listen, now listen, I betrayed Christ and this is what they intend to do unto him. Now he's regretting what he done now. Now the betrayal has already took the taken place. So he brought back the 30 pieces of silver that he, were, he, he, he got paid for because he was sold to do mischief. He's bringing them back to the chief priests and the elders. Watch this. Verse 4. Saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Mm -hmm. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. You see that thing? So we don't care. That's what they're telling. We don't care. That's your business now. You deal with it on your own. They use Judas, basically. The Satan jumped on Judas, by the way. Come on. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. So Judas put him, he killed himself. Okay, come on. He committed suicide. Read. And the chief priest took the, sil the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. Meaning what? It's blood money. We're not going to use it in the temple. Come on. And he took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Meaning what? They just, they, they had a ditch where they just buried, uh, they buried poor people in. Come on. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Really? Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. Whom they of the children of Israel did value. Because what? Christ only came for the 12 tribes of Israel. You know? And gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Mm -hmm. See? And Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. Now this is before death, before Christ was was crucified, now Pontius Pilate is cross-questioning him about what, what's going on. Because remember, they had to take him to Pontius Pilate because they might accuse him so that they can get license to do what? To kill Christ. Meaning what? Rome must give consent for them to do what they want to do. Read on. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. He didn't say nothing. Come on. Then said Pilate unto him, 
carest thou not how many things they witness against thee? Mm-hmm. And he, he answered him to never a word, mm-hmm. in so much that the governor marveled greatly. So now Pontius Pilate is now surprised, like what the hell is going on here? You know? Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. So now the feast is the feast of the Passover. So every year, what the what Rome would do when, whenever they had a feast, they had a thing called amnesty. There's somebody that gets released so that they can be free. You understand? So now this prisoner, he says they wanted to release a prisoner, a people to the people, a prisoner whom they would, whoever they chose that needed to be released from what from prison. Okay, really? And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. So Barabbas was a, was a murderer and he was a thief. And it was known. So the Jews, our forefathers and forefathers said, listen, you know what? We're going to release Barabbas instead. We're going to commit Christ to prison so he can be what? So we can justify us keep putting him to death. Read. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Mm-hmm. Come on. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Read that again, verse 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 18. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. He says he knew, for he knew. So Pontius Pilate figured out, listen, the reason why they want to have this man put to death is because of envy. They envy him. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in the wisdom of Solomon, chapter one. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. Yep. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter six. Wisdom of Solomon, six, verse twenty-three. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter six, verse twenty-three. Come on. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. You see that thing? Neither will I go with consuming envy. Envy will consume you. You understand? It will destroy, it will kill you from within, from inside out. It will corrupt your spirit, it will corrupt your mind. That's exactly what was going on with our forefathers at this point. Go back to Matthew now. No, no, go back to uh, Matthew 27, verse 18. Book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 18. Mm-hmm. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Really? When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. You see that thing? So this is Pontius Pilate's wife. So listen, I had dreams about this man. This is an innocent man. Have nothing to do with what they are doing to him. Okay? That's what he, that's what she's saying. Read. Really? But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Our forefathers was wicked as hell. It's the same thing going on today. Come on. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said Barabbas. He said, listen, release Barabbas. We want to kill this guy right here. Release Barabbas, a murderer and a thief. We don't want him. Release him, he can go free. But we want this innocent man right here. Hey. Pilate says unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, let him be crucified. Meaning what? We want him to die because of what? Envy. And Pontius Pilate picked that up. That the reason why they want this to go down is because of envy. Because what was Christ doing? Hold on. Hmm. Let me see something. Let me see something real quick. Hmm. Look, I believe. Hold on. Yes, give me Luke 23, verse 5. This is the reason why they envy him. The 
the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 5. And they were the more fierce, saying, he stirred up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to his place. You see, to this place. So he started from Galilee, Jewry. Okay, that's, uh, he said he said throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. So Christ was teaching. He was teaching all over. He was going from this city to that city to that place, and that's why he was doing the work. That is the reason why they envied and they hated him. Guess what? When the apostles were teaching, it was the same thing that he set up the people. That's the same thing they say today about us. You know how many times they call the cops on us? Many times they call the cops on us. Why? Because the people, they hate what is coming out. The same thing that Christ did is the same thing that we are doing today. What happened to Christ is the same thing that will happen to us. It already started to happen to us. Okay? Go back to where he was at. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 22. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. Come on. And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Really? When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. So what you wanna what you wanna notice here also is that yes, Pilate. He washed his hands from, from, from what Christ, from what they were accusing, accusing Christ of. Okay, but guess what? But he still them gave them consent to do it. He still gave them consent to do it, because if he really was uh, about about what they teach in Christianity, he was not gonna. He was gonna what? He was gonna stop this whole thing from going down to, you know, to begin with. But he didn't stop it. He still gave consent, although he said, I'm washing my hands off of this, but he still gave consent to do it. Because they, that's what they needed. Our forefathers, they needed consent from Rome to be able to put a man to death. They couldn't do it on their own because they were under the dominion of Rome. So they needed the law of the land to give them license to do it. Hence why they did it. Read on. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us. And on our children. Mm. Our people is weak as hell. Right now, yes. They have, they have, the blood was on, on them and on us. So we the children. Wait. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Come on. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. You see what did they, you see what Pilate did? Pilate, he, he tortured Christ and released him into the common hall where the soldiers were gathered. You understand? He says, and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers and armed. What was they doing to him? Watch this. Verse 28, read on. And they stripped him and put him on a scarlet robe. And put on him a scarlet robe. Read that again, verse 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 28. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. So they, 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 they took all his clothes off. So you need to really imagine what they did. They were humiliating Christ. You understand? They took all his clothes off. He was naked and put on him a scarlet robe. Meaning what? A Roman, a Roman, Roman clothing, Roman garment. You understand? Watch the next part. And when they had plated a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hey, king of the Jews. So now what they did is they took off, they took the clothes that he wore, they put on, they put on him Roman apparel, and they put a crown of thorns upon his head. So the crown of thorns, what is that? That's mockery. The crown of thorns on Christ it is mockery. They are mocking him. The Roman apparel, they are mocking him. You understand? That's what they're doing. Really? And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. 
So they took the reed and smote him on the head with the reed, you know. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the rope off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. So now when Christ was crucified, he wasn't wearing Roman garments like you see the movies and, and the pictures that you see. He wasn't wearing that. They, they took his own clothes that he had and they put a Roman apparel on him and they mocked him. And after that, they took off their Roman garments and they put on his own clothes back on him. You understand? That's what happened. You know, the same too. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. So they, they, they gave Simon of Cyrene the job of, pay, of, of bearing the cross, bearing Christ's cross. Come on. Verse 33. And when, and when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull. A place of a skull, because that's where they were. That's when they did the Roman capital punishment. Because Roman capital, the, the the capital punishment of crucifixion was common in Rome. So when Christ was crucified, it wasn't the first time it was done. Even after Christ was, was crucified, it wasn't the, the last time. If they, it was happening before Christ, during Christ, and after Christ, the Romans were still doing it. You understand? Some of our forefathers were crucified upside down. You understand? Some were crucified on a, 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 a pole. Some were crucified on a pole with a, with a crime of what they say they did. Because the Jehovah's Witnesses, they say, no, it wasn't a cross. Listen, the Rome used different types of crosses to crucify. Some they use a pole, some they use a pole with a crime of the, of, the, of the criminal on top. You understand? So they like to argue back and forth about that, Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses. They like to do that. Okay, read verse 32 again. 32, sir. Verse 33, verse 33 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 33. 27. And verse when they were come... 22. No, no, 27, verse 33. The book yes. of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 33. Mm -hmm. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, really? they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. Mm -hmm. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Because it was bitter, very bitter. Come on. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. So now, it says, and they crucified him and parted his garments, um, in part, and, and, and cast him, cast him lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Watch this. Give me that in Psalm 22. We're going to start at verse 1. Psalm 22, verse 1. Because David, from Psalm 22, Christ is speaking to David of what would happen to him when he was crucified. Psalm 22, verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. Because that, at this point, that's when Christ was crying when he was on the cross. He said, why aren't you helping me? So Christ is speaking through David here. Come on. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and I'm not silent. Really? But thou art holy. Oh, thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Really? Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. Come on. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. Mm -hmm. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. And despised of the people because what? They hated Christ. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah real quick. So what David is saying is that but I am a worm and no man a reproach of men and despised of the people. Isaiah 53, real quick. Uh, we're going to start at verse, let me see where I want to start. Isaiah chapter 53, start at verse, start at verse 1. Let's start at verse 1. 
the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? Mm -hmm. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Come on. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, mm -hmm. and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Next verse. He is despised mm -hmm. and rejected of men. Come on. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Because when it says a man of sorrows, because Israel made him sick. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Okay, come on, verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs. He carried our sorrows, and, yet and, we did esteem him. And surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Go ahead, read that again. The book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted. So the reason why they say he was stricken, he was crucified, is because what? Because he was evil. That's what they were saying. Hence why they are hence the accusation that they say. Go back to Psalm 22 now, verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 6. Mm -hmm. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. Come on. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, mm -hmm. He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. You see what they're saying? He trusted on the Lord because they were they were kicking, they were punching him, they hit him with a reed, they were mocking him, they put a crown of thorns on his head. Meaning what? If you are the son of God, he will surely he will deliver you. Guess what? Satan jumped on them because remember when Christ was fasting 40 days and 40 nights, isn't the same thing that the devil said to Christ? If thou be the son of God, cut thyself down and the, the angels will surely, uh, they will surely catch you unless thou, 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 thou bless thy foot against the stone. The same thing. So Satan jumped on them. Okay, come on. Verse 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. You see that thing? This is letting you know. It says, listen, I'm born of a man and a woman. That's what he's letting you know here. Come on. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. He's saying it again. David is explaining it. Listen, this man is born like you and me. Okay, come on. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, mm -hmm. for there is none to help. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 11. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. The trouble that is near is when? When you are going to be crucified. Come on. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. He's talking about the high priest now. Come on. They gaped upon me with their mouth as a ravening, as a ravening, and a roaring lion. So they were mocking him. Read that again, verse 13. The book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 13. Mm -hmm. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. That's, that's the mockery that we read in the book of Matthew 27. Come on. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. And my, my heart. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Read verse 14 again. Read it slow. Of Psalm chapter 22, verse 14. I am poured out like water, mm -hmm. and all my bones are out of joint. You have to you have to I, really think about it. They beat him so bad that his bones were out of joint. They never broke any of his bones, but they he could see his bones. They beat him so bad he saw his bones, and some of his joint his bones were out of joint. He's letting you know what happened, what was going to happen in the future through David here. Come on. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Really? My strength is dried up like a potshed. 
and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, mm. and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. Oh, that's some heavy stuff right here. Whew. Come on, verse 15. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. Come on. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. You see that thing? I may tell all my bones, meaning I can see my bones. Read on. That's how my that's how that's how bad it was. I may tell all my bones. Come on. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. So now let's go back to Matthew 27, verse 35 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. You see that thing? So that's what, what Matthew is explaining is what David was explaining. So he's quoting Matthew, he's quoting King David. Okay, what Christ was saying through King David. Okay, drop that. Give me Mark chapter 15, verse 21 now. Mark 15, verse 21. The book of Mark chapter 15. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And they compel one Simon, a Syrian, a Serenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Now he's telling you um, the, 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 the brothers that was compelled to carry the cross of Christ. He says, Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. You see that thing? Read. This is more details now than we read in Matthew. Come on. Or in Luke or Mark. I mean, Matthew, Luke, and John. Yeah. Come on. And they bring him unto the place called Gotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. Come on. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh but he received it not. Because it was bitter, come on. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. You see that thing? Because Christ wasn't dressed like a ragamuffin. Okay, he dressed beautifully. So much so that they parted his garments among themselves. Because at first they wanted to tear his garments and divide it up. But they decided, you know what? We're gonna cast lots instead. To see who's gonna get it. Read on, verse 25. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. The third hour is 9 a.m. The third hour, that's when they put him on, on that cross, 9 a.m. Until the what the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m. So for six hours, Christ was hanging on that cross. Six hours. That's some heavy stuff. That's some heavy, heavy stuff right there. Read that again, verse 25. The book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. The third hour, and they crucified him. Give me Matthew 27, verse 36. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 36. Mm -hmm. And sitting down, they watched him there. And Come set on. up over his head, and set up over his head his accusation written. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. You see that thing? The accusation is what makes that pole into a cross. Because they put the accusation across the pole that he was hanging on. You say what? King of the Jews. Okay? Because that was his crime. They say he was trying to overthrow Caesar. You understand? Read on. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. You see that thing, capital punishment. So you had two thieves on, his, on either side of him. Come on. And they that passed by reviled him, waging their heads. Waging their heads. Read that again, verse 39. The book of Matthew chapter 27, verse 39. And they that passed by reviled him, 
waging their heads. Waging, waging their heads. Waging. Sorry. Meaning what? They were shaking their heads. Okay. Is that they that passed by reviled him, waging their heads? Give me that in First Peter two twenty three. First Peter two verse twenty three. The book of First Peter, chapter two, verse twenty three. Mm -hmm. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. The majesty on high. Go back to Matthew now, 27, verse 39. The book, the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 39. Mm -hmm. And they that passed by reviled him. Wagging, wagging, wagging. Um, Matthew chapter 28. Chapter 27, verse 39. And they that passed by re reviled him, wagging their heads. So just think of a dog wagging his tail. The dog wagging his tail, that's exactly what's going on. Come on. And saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. You see that thing? Now they are mocking him. If you be the Son of God, Take yourself down from that cross. Remember, this is the from the ninth hour now. He was hanging on that cross. You understand? Really? Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, really? He saved others. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. Mm, that's some hey, that's some evil stuff right there. Come on. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. If he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. Read verse 43 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 43. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. Let's get the account. So Sol King Solomon saw this thing. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 12. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not of our turn, and he is clean, contrary to our doings. He abraded us with our offending the law and objected to our infamy the transgressing of our education. So he was what? He was he was thoroughly he was thoroughly uh, correcting them. He was he was basically rebuking them sharply. He rebuked them sharply. That's why it says abraded us with our offending the law. So them offending the law, he was cutting them all over the place. You understand? That's why it says abrade, abraded. Uh, the abrasive means to rebuke sharply. Come on, verse 13. He professes he to prof have the knowledge of he, God. He professes, he professes, meaning he's professing that he has the knowledge of God. Read that again, verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 13. He professes to have the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. and he calls himself the child of the Lord. Come on. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He was what? He was made to reprove our thoughts. Remember when Christ showed up on the sea, he says, listen, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with her already in your mind. He was made to reprove our thoughts. Christ took the laws of God to the next level. The mind. That even if you think of wanting to have sex with that sister, you've already committed adultery with her. Okay, read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 14. He was made to reprove our thoughts. Mm -hmm. He is grievous unto us even to behold. Read. For his life is not like other men's. Mm -hmm. His ways are of another fashion. Come on. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. 
he abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness, he pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed and maketh his boast that God is his father. Read on. Let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. Come on. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Read that again, verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 18. Come on. For if the just man be the son of God, mm -hmm. he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. You see that thing? For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hands of his enemies. That's what they were saying to him, what we read in Matthew 27. Come on. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture. And what? That we may know and torture. And torture. That's what that's what An 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 Anias was doing. That's what Caiaphas was doing. That's what Pilate was doing. Okay, come on. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 19. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. You see that thing? That's the same thing that happened to Moses in the wilderness. You understand? Negroes will push your buttons. That's exactly what they were doing here. He says, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. That's why Moses, he couldn't enter into that rest at that time. You understand? Because what? Negroes pushed Moses' buttons. You understand? Read on. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. With a what? For by his own sake, Hold on. Wait, with wait, a wait, shameful wait. death. A shameful death is the cross. The cross was a shameful death. They had to humiliate you. That was a humiliation. You understand? Let us what? Verse 20 again. Let us con Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. Read. For by his own saying, he shall be respected. You see that thing? Come on. Such things they did imagine mm -hmm. and were deceived. For their own wickedness hath blinded them. You see that thing? They were blinded by their own wickedness. That's why they imagine such, such evil things to do to, against Christ because they hated the fact that what was he doing? He was teaching the gospel. What was he teaching? The law. Guess what? What's the problem? The law is the problem. Law and order. That's always been the problem in Israel. Give me Isaiah chapter 30, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 30, The problem is not free. It's not that Christ is a black man. No, no. You can teach Christ is a black man all day. You can teach that God is black all day. You can teach where the Israelites. The minute you get into the curses, you understand that means you must what? Teach the law. Why we went into slavery? The reason why we're at the bottom is because of our sin. Then you get into the sin. Then you're going to see some conversation. You really want to see how people really feel about this Bible. Okay? Isaiah 30 verse 8. No, no, that's nice. Isaiah of, 30, verse 9. Book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 9. Mm -hmm. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Children that will not hear the laws of God. The laws of God is always is the reason why we are in the mess that we're in. Breaking of God's commandments, hatred. You understand? Hatred of God's laws is the reason why we are trodden underfoot by the other nations. Okay, because of our art, our own rebellion. Watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 now, verse 21 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Such things they did imagine and were deceived, for their own wickedness had blinded them. For their own wickedness had blinded them. Go back to Matthew now, 27, verse 44 now. The book of Matthew chapter 27, verse 44. Mm -hmm. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Come on. 
Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land unto the ninth hour. There was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. The sixth hour is 12 p.m. The sixth hour is 12 p.m. Read that again, verse 45. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 45. Mm -hmm. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land unto the ninth hour. There was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew now. Give me Mark 15.33. Let me see something. The book of Mark. Mm -hmm. Read that. Mark chapter 15, verse 33. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness all over the whole land until the ninth hour. Read that again. The book of Mark chapter 15, verse 33. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So 12 p.m. So from 12 to 3, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Matthew is saying, go back to Matthew 27 now. Matthew 27, verse 45. The book of Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. So now Ma Matthew is saying there was darkness over the whole, it was, it was over all the land unto the ninth hour. Mark is saying over the whole land until the ninth hour. Give me the book of Luke now. Give me Luke 23, verse 44. The book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 44. And it was about the sixth hour, Hold and on. there was a... Wait, wait. Mm. Give me one second. You know what? Just hold that for a second. Give me Luke 22, verse 1. The book of Luke, chapter 22. Verse 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Come on. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Now watch this. Now Luke is going backwards a little bit. Okay, come on. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. So what, had, what entered into Judas? Then Satan. Then entered Satan into Judas. Uh -huh. So Satan jumped on Then him. So because what was, what, what, what was the spirit of Satan that jumped on Judas? Because Judas was covetous. Judas was covetous and he was a thief. Those are the demons or the spirits, that, the evil spirits that jumped on Judas. And the scribes and Pharisees and the high priests, they were able to see that thing. That's why Judas was used for that thing. Was well, okay? But you know what? I'm going to deal with this the next time. Tomorrow, Lord will. Go back to Luke 23, verse 44. Luke chapter 23, verse 44. Mm -hmm. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Read that again, verse 44. The book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 44. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. So there was darkness over all the earth, over all the earth. So Luke is giving more detail. Matthew doesn't give that detail. It says the land. Mark says the land, or the whole land. Luke is saying the whole earth. What type of darkness can do that? A solar eclipse. There was a solar eclipse because a solar eclipse can only happen when the moon is what type, what color is the moon? What happens? Who can explain a solar eclipse? Videos on. Yeah. Videos on, brothers and sisters. I want to see some faces, okay?
So who can explain what happens during a solar eclipse? I see spiritual hands are up Monday. May I try it, sir? So uh, during a, a solar eclipse is when the, the moon is in front of the sun. So the moon covers the, the light that the sun uh, brings forth towards the earth. Okay. So what, what moon is there? Mo a uh, full moon. A full moon. Ganda? It's the, the dark moon, sir. Okay. Why do you say that? Because uh, according to what we have learned is that... Uh, the moon decreases in her perfection. Okay. So, yes, so um, from the new moon, which is the beginning of the month, it will decrease all the way to around the 14th or 15th of that month and then start increasing again afterwards. And that is during the time of Passover. Okay, so that is correct. So on the first day of the month, you have a full moon. 14 day, 14 or more days after those 40, uh, after that is what moon, is the black moon. So the solar eclipse can only happen when the moon is black. And that's not the full moon. Because the full moon, remember, we use the moon to determine what, to declare the day. We use the moon to declare the day, the seasonal seat. So what happens is that the moon will be able to tell us, okay, like now the Passover is coming. Okay, we're going to be counting 14 days, okay? We will count 14 days from the first day, okay? Which, whenever it falls, and then we're going to count 14 days to pass over. The 14th day at sundown is the night of the Passover. Then from there, it's going to be the black moon, which will increase again, okay? From black to bright, which becomes the full moon again, 14 days or 14 or 15 days later. Make sense? Yes, sir. So the reason why they can be the, the solar eclipse is because of the black moon. Because the full moon is which moon? The new moon, sir. The new moon. Okay. When was it created? How do we know? It is the, the beginning of months. Yeah, well, but when? How do we know? How do we know that the full moon is it, the new moon? It, it's full... It's full and bright, sir. Yes, but how do we know the full that the full moon is the new moon? How do we know? Uh, I think we we'll go to Genesis uh, when That's it was created. Day. Yes, which, 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 when, what, what day was it? Uh, it was uh, day, day five, sir. No, no. No, 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 So I think it was created on day four. The fourth day. Let's get it. Genesis 1. The book of Genesis. 1 verse 14. Chapter 1 verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Read. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Read. And God made two great lights, and the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. You see that thing? So now, the full moon is the new moon. The full moon was not when it was dark. During the creation account, the full moon is the new moon. The new moon is the full moon. Okay. Okay. Let's go back. Luke 24, Luke 23, that's 44. Uh, you can switch up the videos now. I'm almost done. The book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 44. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Until the ninth hour. So guess what? At this point, there was what? There was a solar eclipse. And the solar eclipse can only take place when the moon is black. Not when the moon is full, when it's black. 
Okay, that's how we know that the full moon is the new moon because the beginning of our month, you see the full moon and it decreases in its perfection. And then it becomes black. On the 14th day of Passover, which is the first day of the Passover, the moon is going to be black. So on the night of the Passover, that's, the, that's when the thing, the event of leading up to Christ being put on the cross on the, in, in the what? In the third hour, which is, uh, which is 9 a.m. The sixth hour, which is 12 p.m., that's when there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, until 3 p.m. So there was three hours of what? Of darkness on the earth. You understand? Three hours of darkness. All right. So I'm going to end the class right here. I'll do part two tomorrow, Lord's Word. All right. Uh, let's break break. First Corinthians 11 23. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. Come on. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.